Hello, friends. This week, I get the honor of lighting the candle with you today for our children's time and saying a prayer. We're continuing on our lesson series about the Trinity, and I wanted to share with you that there was once someone who said such amazing things and did such wonderful things that people asked him, who are you? And he said, I am the light of the world. With that, we will light our third candle. Join me in prayer. In whispers at night and in daily surprises, in barns and in homes, in oceans and in lakes, in the voice of a child, in the chirp of a bird, let us remember that God is always with us. God as eternal love, God as Holy Spirit, and God as Jesus, the light of the world. Amen. Hello, and welcome back to Sunday School. We are in our second week of looking at the Trinity, God the Parent, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Today, we're looking at God the Son. We're looking at Jesus. And there's a lot we could read for story time about Jesus. I mean, the whole New Testament is basically about him. So you could pick pretty much anything and be talking about Jesus in the New Testament. But today, I picked a really fun story about Jesus. It's when Jesus fed the 5,000 out of fishes and loaves. He took a couple fishes and a couple loaves and fed 5,000 people. That's a lot of people. He had a gift of multiplying food. If you were going to get to multiply food, what kind of food would you multiply? I think I might pick cupcakes. I like cupcakes. But fishes and loaves are good too. Let's read our story of how Jesus fed the 5,000. Jesus feeds the 5,000. It was a beautiful sunny day as Jesus and his disciples crossed the Sea of Galilee in a boat with white sails. Jesus had been healing sick people and many more people of all ages came to see him again that day. Maybe they could hear more of Jesus' stories or see him show God's power through another miracle. When Jesus saw the large crowd of men, women, and children, he asked his friend Philip, how are we going to get enough food to feed all these people? Philip answered, I could work for six months and not earn enough money to buy food for all these men, women, and children. The disciples didn't know what to do. Just then, Andrew pointed to a young child and said, here is a boy who has five small loaves of bread and two fish. It is something. It certainly isn't enough food for all these people. The boy looked very nervous as he said in a small voice, Jesus, please take my food if you think it will help. Jesus took the five loaves of bread and the two fish that the boy offered and asked his friends to have the crowd sit down. About 5,000 people sat in the grassy meadow by the lake that day. After Jesus gave thanks to God, he blessed the five loaves of bread and the two fish, and he shared the food with all the people who were there that day. All 5,000 people ate until they were full. Then Jesus said, now let's gather up all the leftovers. And you know what? There was enough leftover pieces of bread to fill 12 large baskets, more loaves and fishes left over than the boy had given to Jesus. The disciples shook their heads in disbelief as they struggled to pick up the baskets, heavy with food. The people saw the full baskets of leftovers, and they began to understand that something extraordinary had just happened, another miracle. Jesus smiled as he heard the people say, God must have sent Jesus to us. It was a day the boy, the disciples, and all the people would never forget. That's a great story. It reminds me of a question. 
If you were the boy who gave Jesus his food that day, what would you tell people about what happened? That's a good question. Think about that. And I hope you enjoy the rest of your Sunday School lesson, and we will see you again next week. Bye. Hi, it's good to be with you today. We're talking about the Trinity, and today especially we're talking about Jesus. And I got to wondering, because I'm outside at the end of a long day, and it's a beautiful evening, and I'm relaxing, and I got to thinking, what, I wonder, would Jesus do after a busy day, when he was having a busy day doing all that he did? What did Jesus do to relax at the end of the day? And so my imagination started to go. So like when he was 12 and his family were at the festival and they were going home and realized, oh no, Jesus isn't here. And they had to go back to the temple and they found Jesus visiting with all the elders that day. Or maybe the day where Jesus and his mom were at the wedding at Cana and Jesus performed his first miracle and turned water into wine. Or what about the day that he met the woman at the well and gave her that cup of living water to drink? Or how about the day when, when there was the crowds all around and Zacchaeus, who wasn't liked by anyone because he was a tax collector, had to climb a tree to see Jesus. And Jesus saw him and said, Zacchaeus, I want to eat at your house that day. All these stories, what would Jesus do at the end of a busy day like those? Or after a day of fishing with all the disciples? Or after he was teaching at the beach, maybe that day of the feeding of the 5,000 where they turned just a few loaves of bread and a few fish into um, enough to feed that huge crowd. What would Jesus have done at the end of a busy day? Well, food was really important for Jesus, wasn't it? A lot of really important things, a lot of his teachings happened around a table, like the breaking of the bread when he had the Last Supper with his friends. So I wonder what Jesus did at the end of those days. Like, what if after way back to the beginning, that first story with Jesus at the temple and his parents couldn't find him and it was probably chaos and they got home from that day and everything had gone wrong and they had to find Jesus. Mary probably said, Joseph, you go light the campfire. I'm going to go get the marshmallows. What if they sat down around the campfire and said, let's have some s'mores together. Do you like s'mores? I love s'mores. Look, I have some here I've been working on. The chocolate and the cookies, grain wafers, and the marshmallows. Or what if after those days of healing people and feeding people and teaching, again, same thing Jesus said, you know what, someone go light the campfire. Let's have a marshmallow. Let's make some s'mores. And out of his satchel would come these, these ingredients, these three ingredients to make s'mores. I wonder if that happened on the beach or and someone's backyard, maybe Zacchaeus and Jesus had s'mores for dessert together after that meal. But what a wonderful way to think that maybe, just maybe, using our imaginations, that was something Jesus did, special with his friends, to connect with his family, whatever it was, at the end of a busy day. So s'mores are some of my favorite things. Um, we often eat s'mores, don't we, around a campfire in the summer. And so maybe you can do that um, this year, this summer. Do you ever do that with a campfire that you take your marshmallows and you warm them over the fire? And some of us like to just have them golden brown and others like to burn their marshmallows. Look at these nice brown ones. They're already kind of melty and falling off the stick. And what do we do? Well, we take our marshmallows, don't we? And we put some chocolate in between. And then we take our other marshmallow. Look at this. We take our marshmallows and we make our s'mores together. How can we squish it? Let me see. Can I help? Can I squish it without getting too sticky? Look at this. Oh, it's so gooey. Look at that. You know what's kind of neat? When I think about us talking about the Trinity, how God is three in one. Oh, I'm all sticky. How God is three in one. Like God and Jesus and the Spirit, the different ways, or Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the way we talk about the Trinity, that sort of 
what this is, isn't it? Three ingredients to make s'mores, our, our grain wafer and our chocolate and our marshmallow. So I hope this summer that if you have a chance to have s'mores and you're using your three things to make your one delicious s'more, maybe you can remember some of these stories of Jesus and how Jesus we often think of as our friend and our teacher and a healer and a guide and all those things that Jesus was in our stories. Maybe, maybe think about those um, stories when you're enjoying s'mores around the campfire and maybe wonder and imagine if Jesus did the same thing to end his day. Thanks for watching. I hope to see you soon. Bye-bye.